Hey friends, Derek from Bomb Socks here with another day of Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. Uh, there is a very familiar story. It is probably the most familiar story in the book of Numbers. It is this story right here where you see Moses standing there with a brazen serpent on a pole and people are looking at it and some of them are not. So let me give you the story with this. And many of us know this. this is nothing brand new. You go to Numbers chapter 21 verse 4. Now, this is after the children of Israel provoked the Lord that we talked about last time, and they now have to wander in the wilderness until their carcasses die, and those who are believers get a chance to go in. So you got to wait for old Israel to die off here, and you get this new group who gets to actually come in and experience the promised land. But verse 4, they journeyed over by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. That will happen. Verse Verse 5, and the people spake against God and against Moses. Sadly, we see this so much. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? It'd be interesting to go in and see the number of times this is said in the Old Testament. For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. We are so sick of manna. Verse 6, and the Lord sent fiery or poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much of the people of Israel died. Verse 7, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, uh, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he may take away serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. There's a reason why Moses is who he is. Moses is such a good, patient, faithful person. Oh, I love this. So the people came to Moses and they're just like, okay, will you please heal us from this? Where the Lord in verse 8 says, Make thee a fiery serpent, set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made the serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if the serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So this is like the coolest snake bite kit ever. They get bit. Moses is like, all right, look at this thing. And as you look at this thing, you will be healed. And sadly, there were many who would not look at it. They just, they wouldn't look at it. And we know a lot of that from the Book of Mormon. So I want to pull up my snake bite kit here, if you will. There's a bunch of verses here. So you started, we just read that Numbers 21, 8 and 9, where you look at this serpent and you will live. You go to 1 Nephi 17, 41, then go over to Alma 33, verses 18 to 22. Go over to Alma 37, verses 6 and 7, and then 46 and 47. And then you go to Helaman 8, 13 through 15, and then finish up with Doctrine and Covenants section 6, verse 36. And I love how modern revelation teaches us more about this story. So if you'll take a few minutes and go in and read these verses, uh, I want you to see what you are taught about this crazy experience. Now again, if only this applied to our day, right? Look, all you gotta do is just look at the brass serpent. Look at it and you will be healed. That's it. And there's so many people who are like, wait a second, now what do we really need to do? Honestly, we as humans overcomplicate things. Here's the Lord who has said to us, do this, do this, do this, and you're good. And we're just like, okay, wait a minute. And we try to overcomplicate this and we get all over the place with it. We are messy and we tend to overcomplicate things. Like for example, you go to Alma 37. This is one of the verses that I gave to you. And this chapter is a phenomenal chapter for so many reasons. Verse six, now you may suppose that this is foolishness in me, just like holding up a brass serpent. This might seem silly to you, but behold, I say unto you that by small and simple things are great things brought to pass. And small means in many instances doth confound the wise. Meaning a lot of people who are think they're so smart and wise are going to be like, nah, that's not how it's going to work. And the Lord God doth work by means, these small and simple means, to bring about his great and eternal purposes. And by very small means, the Lord doth confound the wise and bringeth about the salvation of many souls. You go down to verses 46 and 47, which deal with this particular story. Oh, my son, do not let us be slothful because of the easiness of the way. For so it was with our fathers, for so it was prepared for them, that if they would look, they might live. 
even so it is with us. The way is prepared, and if we will look, we may live forever. And now, my son, see that you take care of these sacred things. This is where Alma is passing these on to his son Helaman. He's passing on the plates. Take care of these sacred things. Yea, see that you look to God and live. Go into this people, declare the word, and be sober, my son. Farewell. So simple. He's like, look, will you just do these small and simple things? things. I mean, you even go to that Doctrine and Covenant 636, such a simple verse. Look unto me in every thought, doubt not, fear not. These seem like very simple things to do, but we are the ones who complicate it. Really, if you want to make it to the celestial kingdom, I got a plan for you here. You ready? Here we go. Will you just read your scriptures every day? And will you say your prayers every day, every morning and every night? And we go to church, take the sacrament, and just do those things. Now, as you do those things, you will find, and this goes back to what we talked about at the beginning of the week where you put God first, everything else is going to fall into its proper places. Because sometimes we start making crazy lists of things that we're going to do to be able to make it the celestial kingdom. You know, uh, it just gets very overcomplicated. And we do that. And we, we give challenges to everybody to do this, 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 and this, and this. Yep, stop it. Stop it right now. And will you go in and will you read your scriptures and will you say your prayers and will you attend your church meetings, make covenants with God. And if you do those things, all those other things are going to come in. You're going to find yourself doing your family history work. You're going to find yourself going to the temple. You're going to find yourself ministering. You're going to do those things because you put those other things, those small and simple things. So here's Moses saying, look, will you just look at the serpent, which is a representative of Jesus Christ in this instance, the very thing you look at this, it will save you. So I would I would just invite you, myself included, to not overcomplicate the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is beautifully simple and simply beautiful. Don't let us be the ones that overcomplicate the process by trying to find all the other stuff with it. Look to God and live. I love that counsel and it is so applicable for us today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing these messages. We love that you do that. And please go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Godspeed. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.